I have with me Sam of Penfolds. Welcome to Bangalore, Sam. Thank you. So we're going to talk a little bit about Penfolds uh, in a fun way. This is just to introduce a little bit about this very iconic brand of wine from Australia and also Sam's views about wine. So, Sam, you walk, you go around the world talking about Penfolds. Yes. It's a wonderful brand. So, I mean, you know, it's a great job, I assume. Yes, yes. So, tell me three things you love about your job. So, probably the three things I love most about the job are the travel. The places that I get to see are absolutely amazing. Okay. Uh, the people I get to meet, of course, I get to travel to so many countries and meet so many people enthusiastic about wine. But I think the most important thing is that somebody is silly enough to pay me to drink. <laughs> and that is the best part. Amazing. I, I mean, I like that. So, um, the founder of Penfolds, uh, Christopher Penfold, was a physician yes. and he believed in the medicinal qualities of wine. Uh, tell me three things about wine which you think would keep the doctor away. Uh, now, I, I probably couldn't claim any absolute medical properties about no, no, wine, yes. but um, for me, I think that uh, wine is part of a healthy lifestyle, so I think that there is definitely some antioxidant attributes to it. Um, but. I'm a firm believer in laughter being the best medicine and I generally find that wine is an incredibly social thing and I think having a glass of wine with good friends, good family and enjoying yourself is probably something that has got to be good for you. I'm not a doctor but I can attest to that. Um, and I think probably the third thing would be that we've been making it for 170 years and I don't think anybody's ever felt worse after having a glass of our wine, maybe more. <laughs> So, tell me three words you'd use to describe Penfolds. It would be quality, Okay. it would be consistency, right. and I think I have to use the word Australian just because Penfolds is such yes. an iconic part of the Australian Absolutely. wine landscape, but I think also the, the Australian persona. I, I Australian agree. wine has its um, you know fans around the world. The three things which perhaps we don't know about Australian wine, the general viewer? Yeah, um, I think probably the, the three most interesting and unique things coming out of Australia at the moment are the cool climate regions, giving us some really lovely, elegant, refreshing styles of white in particular, as opposed to maybe the big bold Shiraz that everybody knows. Um, the other thing is that it's seasonal in Australia. It does get cold. We have some vineyards that actually get snow on them in winter. And most people think that Australian vineyards are just hot, dry with a kangaroo bouncing through them. But generally, we've got a very diverse viticulture. Um, and I think also the young winemakers coming up through it. People look at wine as being quite traditional. I can tell you there's an amazing vanguard of young Australian winemakers who've thrown the rule book out the window and they're doing some really amazing stuff with lesser known great varietals and new styles of wine. Wonderful. So, you must have, you've traveled so much, you must have some favorite wines besides Penfolds. Three iconic wines you totally love and why you love them okay. around the world, anywhere in the world. Uh, now, whenever it comes to me uh, asking about favorite wines, I say you can't choose between your children, but um, for other people's wines, um, I think Krug Champagne is something that has always withstood the test of time for me. I genuinely regard it as the king of champagnes and uh, something that's not been surpassed in my personal opinion. Uh, I'm a massive lover of uh, Pinot Noir and also Riesling, so I would have to say um, a Grand Cru Burgundy like um, Chambertin Clos de la Bez from, uh, from Moissonnet is one of my wine moments when I tried in 1979, my birth year, so that would definitely have to be up there. Um, and of course, I would have to put a Penfolds wine in there, so Penfolds Grange is, uh, is a very easy one for me. Okay, old world classics versus new world innovation. Just tell us three things to balance it all. Um, I mean, the old world classics are just beautifully steeped in tradition and they have centuries of history behind them and you don't make wine for centuries without doing something right. So I think that, that there is a huge place for old world classics, but I think new world innovation, which may not have the legal constraints, as I talked about the young Australian winemakers, it's not just in Australia, there's amazing places out in California and Spain and across the wine world where I say people are throwing the rule book out the window and bringing in great varieties that have never been used before and making incredibly diverse and different styles of wine. So I think that would probably be it. And um, 
and the jury's still out on the whole new natural wine thing but again I genuinely believe there's some really exciting things happening in there but um, it's still in its experimental stages so um, uh, watch this space would be my thing on that as opposed to any verdict one way or the other at the moment. Three amazing food pairings you would say with Bedford's wines which people must try. Must try. So um, probably one of our lesser known wines is Riesling. Riesling is a grape that's been grown in Australia for almost 200 years now and dry South Australian Riesling and oysters is a match made in absolute heaven so that would be a must for me. Uh, then I think we're so famous for Shiraz and for Grange. I think if you're fortunate enough to have a glass of Grange in front of you, you can't go past the classic Wagyu steak. So that idea of just having that beautiful combination of red wine and rich red meat. Uh, and then probably a slightly lesser known one is our, our Fortified Tawnies, the wine that Dr. Penfold started off by prescribing to his patients. Um, this is like liquid caramel in a glass and that with something like a sticky toffee pudding is uh, one of the best ends to an evening that I've ever had the, uh, the honour of experiencing. Oh, that sounds like something we have to try. Yes. So, a really tough one. Um, if you had to take one wine with you to a desert island, uh, pick. I put you in a spot. This, this really is a, a, a spot. Um, one wine for the rest of my life, I would probably have to be controversial and say it wouldn't be a Penfolds wine. It would probably actually be Champagne. I think that I've, uh, I'm definitely not on Crook's payroll, but I would have to uh, cite that again because I think there is just something about Champagne that is uh, more than a glass, it's a feeling. And so that, that for me would have to be my desert island wine. Okay, thank you so much, Sam. That was great fun. Thank you.